Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. Today, I'm going to do a channeling session with Robin Williams. Now, Robin has a playlist here at Above Life Channel, so check out some previous videos I have done where I have already spoken with Robin Williams. So um, there's a little story behind this particular channeling session. I actually did record a video channeling with him, talking to him about current events. And the entire video, it was awesome, by the way. It was awesome, but you're never going to be able to hear it. Oh, you could see it. I could share it with you, but all you would hear was static because for some reason, my audio mic, now I'm paranoid about it, wasn't working very well. So it did not record any sound. Yeah. I decided then, since I wanted to channel with Robin, I would go and look at the You Choose the Channel video and see if you had questions for me to ask for Robin. And you did. So we're going to go with that. So this particular video is brought to you by, I printed them out, see? Brought to you by Audrey and Angela and their questions. So you see, everything happens for a purpose, doesn't it? So perhaps it is so that Audrey and Angela can get their questions answered so you guys can thank them. And if you want to submit a request for channeling for someone, go to the You Choose the Channel video. I'll link that in the description below. Submit the person's name and up to five questions that you'd like for me to ask that person and tell me your name and where you're from so that I can give you a shout out. Let's get started. Okay, so the first question for Robin. Well, I suppose I could formally invite him in. <laughs> he said, that's, <laughs> he's like, that's fine. I need no introduction. <laughs> I know, it's funny, you guys. So I actually have a tiara over here in my bedroom. That seems random, but I have it right over here. <laughs> I'm, in, I'm in my new office space in my, my bedroom. I have this tiara sitting over in the corner. <laughs> we had to move some things around, okay? a tiara in my bedroom and a good friend of mine gave it to me when I went on a girl's um, trip to uh, Disney World and so I had this tiara and I said I kind of was joking and I said to Robin well maybe I should wear my tiara while we're having the channeling he says yes you yeah, yes of course you should wear your tiara so anyway that's where that's coming from so see these things like happen in my mind sometimes and I don't always articulate them on that video but I'm going to try to do my best to really share with you everything that's coming through and not just, you know, kind of edit things out or whatever, because I think it's interesting for you guys to know about how spirit communication works and it can be very casual, natural and no big deal. And it's natural for you to question and go, oh, I'm just making that up in my mind. No, it's not. That's not what's happening. All right. So the first question is, Okay, so this is from a mother and daughter team. Angela is the daughter and Audrey is the mother. And I think it's Audrey. I think, yeah, it looks like Audrey with a D. Uh, so the first question is, did it suck being famous? <laughs> he said, yes. <laughs> he says, you know, sometimes I think it might be, it might have been better for me if I could have just been an actor in the theater and not been on, um, not been into movies or TV. So do you regret getting into television or movies? And did you have a preference? TV was the place where you had the most access, where people could see you the most and you had the most visibility. So it would give you opportunities for movies. Um, movies were something that I feel like um, they were a great opportunity for me. They were a great opportunity for me. And well, you know, I, I did stand up, right? You know, I uh, uh, known for being a comedian. It's really tough to change that, that, um, you kind of get molded into that and it can be tough to change that that view of you um, just with any actor or actress I mean the same thing can happen I feel I received a lot of joy from television because of being able to make people laugh you know to bring to bring some serious issues up but at the same time to have a sense of humor about it is really important, especially right now, right? 
you know, we tried to talk. We tried to talk the other day, and, and uh, Bridget and I talked about, um, you know, current events. And I got to be careful what I say. She told me not to use specific words and things because apparently uh, the video company doesn't like that. And so, but it's it's important. That's all you have is, is humor. It's all you have is, is, is the joy of life. And uh, knowing that I could give that to people, to give that to others, that, that feels good. The, and the most often or the way I could do that all the time was through, through, um, through television. Did I prefer movies? See, like Bridget's asking. So I'm asking in my head, you guys, and I'm getting information from him, like he's telling a story, but I also am feeling it here. So I'm kind of receiving it in my throat area and a little bit in my heart. So I'm feeling, sensing energy, and I'm trying to do my best to translate through words and just talk as though he's talking. So it's my words, his thought, information, message coming in and some of his words okay so it's kind of a combo platter <laughs> that's what you see what you see here guys what you see all right so i asked in my head did you prefer movies because movies like okay so best movie of all time for me for you um well there was two goodwill hunting incredible i think that might have been the year that was it titanic or something that was the year that some other movie was really big too and so Many of us that are fans of your work were just so impressed by your, I mean, incredible performance in, in um, oh, I'm thinking, I'm sorry, too. I said Goodwill Hunting, right? You guys, did I say that one? That was awesome. Dead Poet Society. That's the one I'm thinking of, Dead Poets, because he's looking at me going, Goodwill Hunting? No, no, no. He's like, no, you mean Dead Poet Society. Yes, I do mean Dead Poet Society. Absolutely. And those the more serious roles were incredible to see you in. Incredible to see you in. So in, in, impressive. And of course, one of my favorite funny movies of yours is um, Mrs. Doubtfire. <laughs> you guys, write in comments below what your favorite body of work is of Robin Williams' favorite movie, favorite TV show, that kind of a thing. And I know you... Um, we're involved in a show, a television show too, before your death. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it was, he said he didn't do very many. I don't know if it was six episodes or something or it got canceled or something was going on. He's showing me things were going on and things were different. Um, I don't know if he actually had a directing role or producing role, but I'm seeing him acting and directing or producing it. So, um, but it feels like it got picked up for like a little bit and then it got dropped or changed or something like that. So it wasn't a full on go, like it wasn't as successful as, as he had hoped it would be. But he says, I had a lot of ups and downs during that time. So um, there's a lot of things going on in my life that people knew about and that people did not know about. People knew about the mental health stuff, but they didn't know about the disease stuff. So um, I did a good job of hiding that, masking that. He says, masking it, masking it. All right. Okay, so, all right. Oh, and I asked you if movies were more important to you. Not, I wouldn't say, he says, um, I wouldn't say they're more important. I wouldn't say any of that. I think every opportunity that I've had, I, I appreciate. And for any actor, you just want to be working. He says, you just want to be working. Well, are you an actor or a comedian? How would you describe yourself? I'm a comedic actor is how I think it would be uh, portrayed. But I think actor, actor. And, and later in life, he says, <clears throat> later in life like his age, like acknowledging his age, like all of a sudden I see his long beard, like he's stroking this long beard, like later in life, professor-like. i much more interested in writing or, or, or producing, um, directing. I mean, really, I'm interested in, in knowing how that would have turned out. That's, that's a piece that is interesting to me. Um, he's mentioning a really, his really good friend, Tom Hanks, and the fact that Tom is healing and his wife, Rita, I think it's Rita, right? It's R, yeah, he says R-I. Um, that they're, they're recovering, they're healing from the wave of health concerns that have wiped through. I have to be careful about what I say, you guys, because YouTube picks up words and doesn't like it, but health stuff, they've been dealing with some sickness. So he's acknowledging that and understanding that humor has a, a place and even during serious times, during dire times, he said, um, humor has a place. 
there's always a place. There's always a place for humor. Even in the pain, you know? Sometimes it gives you an opening, he says. Even in the pain. Mm. Wow. Okay, so another question. Was it a hard decision to take your life? Robin Williams um, took his own life, as many of you know, um, by suicide. And so she's asking if it was a difficult decision. He says, I gotta be careful how I answer this, how I respond to it. Not, not particularly, no. It's not really something you just decide. For me, it wasn't really something I just decided. It wasn't quite as premeditated as you might have, you might have, have thought it, it was. Um, he's giving me the impression that he got to the brink of taking that step into the afterlife multiple times. And he says, my mind wasn't right. It wasn't healthy. And there's a lot of reasons why people do make that choice. And he says, I can't, I can't speak for others. I can only tell you that it isn't something I wanted. or planned for. It isn't something I wanted or planned for. It was rather a feeling of, um, he's giving me a feeling of being out of options. That he didn't want to become a vegetable or a prisoner in his body or a prisoner of his mind. You see, saying, I didn't want to be a vegetable. I didn't want to be a burden to my family. I didn't want to cause any, any more pain. And he's like literally showing me that he needed to step out of the pain and he didn't know how to do it. He says, there's much healthier things you can do, much, much better choices that you can make. And so do you regret it? Yes. He says, yes. Yes. For my family. It caused a, a great deal of pain more than I ever really thought about. I, all I had considered was the pain that they were already in and the pain that I was in. And I thought it would be better in the short term. It would be painful, but in the long term it would be better, but it's, it's not, it doesn't, it doesn't really get better. I think people should know that it doesn't get better. It doesn't make things better. Long term. Oh boy. Okay. All right. Kind of serious there, Robin. Kind of serious. Good question though. I mean, it's an honest question. All right. So let's see. Um, what did you like to do better? Voice acting or acting in person? Oh, <laughs> A question after my own heart. The Genie and Aladdin is one of my very favorite, favorite Disney movies. And I love Disney. I love it. Maybe that's why. Oh, my gosh. Maybe that. Now I'm putting two and two together. The crown that I had, the tiara we wore in Disney World. So maybe that's where that's coming from, you guys. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Good question. He says, oh, I enjoy both. He said, I enjoy both. I can't. I can't say it's. Long term, I think that there's much more sustainability in voice acting because you can. It doesn't matter what you look like; <laughs> you can fit whatever role you want to want to want to rock in that <laughs> in that regard. So you have longevity in career. Then he says longevity, and that's a, that's a plus. He says um, I enjoyed it. Every actor, every movie, all the the people that I got to work with. I mean, there's a great group of talented people all over all over and all and many 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 of the projects i've been in you know there's some and he swears you guys he says there's some a-holes too i would say if i had to choose one i would say in person because it stretches me it, it stretches me a bit more um physically and really working off another person and being filmed there's a lot more mm, like a 
pressure, kind of a pressure to it or uh, raising the standards to it. But when you're voice acting, it's much more creative and you can really let loose. So, uh, but I would say if I had to choose one, I'd say in person, at least until I'm too old and ugly for people to want to see me. <laughs> That's what he says. Okay. Uh, Robin, I don't think anybody would say that about you, but okay. All right. So good questions, you guys. All right. Let's see. And they say they both love you a lot. Absolutely love your work and love you a lot. And let's see. And one more question. On the other side, what is a day on the other side like for you? I want to know. There is no time or time if time is different here than on the other side. I just, and then she says, I just want to know what a theater guy would do on the other side. All right, so this kind of is two questions. So on the other side, what is a day like for you? Nothing like on earth, nothing what you think of, nothing what you think of. There's no body, so there's no, there's no schedule, there's no um, to-do list, there's no pressure or um, appointments to make. It's, it's different than... Like us talking, it, that wouldn't exist really in, in the spirit sense of things. It's, it's more of an existence. It's more of like being a vapor, you know, just being a smoggy, foggy, mystical, smoky energy. That's kind of what it's like <laughs> more than <laughs> you're showing me like a Pirates of the Caribbean <laughs> kind of a vibe. Um, it's more of a. It's probably more like Aladdin than it is uh, being the genie in a bottle than it is uh, real life. It's not, it's not, it's, it's really hard. It is very difficult to explain the concept of time or of understanding what it is we do. There's nothing to really do because there's, there's just an essence, an existence of a being, just your being, you're existing. You, you can um, focus your energy into, um, a person's life or supporting someone that you love, a loved one if they're missing you particularly a lot and bringing love into their heart, or you can um, help an upcoming actor get inspired and support them in their, their audition or in their role, or you know, you can visit, but not, it's not in the same way. It's not like you and I are talking now. It, it takes a great deal more effort to do that, to, to bring the essence, the energy of spirit into a human context with words to translate what energy is. But um, it's more like, he literally says vapor, you guys, like vapor, like smoggy mist. That's kind, of, that's kind of what I'm like. So in real life, I guess I'm more like the genie of Aladdin than not. So can I have three wishes? Can you grant us three wishes? Absolutely, whatever your heart desires, he says. But no returns, no refunds, no exchanges, no guarantees. And you can't ask for more wishes. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you so much, Angela and Audrey, for bringing through Robin Williams today. If you guys have, again, I want to make sure that I, I invite you guys to participate in the comment section below and put, if you guys have a favorite movie, your favorite character that Robin Williams played, please post that so we can share the love of that. Thank you so much, Robin, for being here today. Appreciate that. Um, I do have a question before we go. Can you shed some light for us on, we kind of talked about current events a little bit. We actually did a whole channeling about it that nobody's ever going to get to see, like I mentioned earlier in the video, because no sound. So can you give us any kind of insight or advice, <laughs> guidance, give us some guidance on um, the, state of, the state of affairs here in the U.S. and, and globally, um, health-wise? Can you speak to that? Okay, so now, okay. <laughs> he has a mask on, like trying to protect himself and gloves from me. Like I'm, I, I'm, I'm at home. I'm, I, we're stay at home right now. That's what we have to do here in Minnesota right now. So I'm stay at home right now, you guys. Um, recording this video in March, 2020, just seen you know, a very end of March, last weekend of March. And he kind of reminds me of Patch Adams, which was an, an, a phenomenal movie also. Mm, another one. Mm, and then Good Morning Vietnam. And oh my gosh, you guys, Robin, you've been in so many movies. Mm -hmm. He's got like these gloves on and he's like looking around like... Um, 
seriously though, he said, he says, you know, it's funny how things, you act like things aren't your problem. It's not my problem. It's not my problem. It's their problem. It's their problem over there. He says, whatever issue, whatever social issue you look at, it's, it's their problem. It's not my problem. That sure has changed now, isn't it? It's everybody's problem. As far as, um, I, don't, I don't necessarily know that it's, that there's this um, call for unification or uniting people. It's not, it's not as grandiose as you, you think it is, and it's not as scary. As far as long-term longevity, there will be um, immunities and antibodies and things, but it will take time. He's looking, he's showing me 2 3, which to me says like two. Oh, I don't even want to predict. Stop right there. I don't want to predict. Um, it won't be, you know, crisis is created by fear and the fact that our health has been ignored for so long and the social issues that are going to be coming up or are being shown as a result of this, the ramifications, those are far more important, far greater than the health issue by itself as a silo is. And you'll see that. You'll see that. He says it'll, it'll show up. And it's not about being afraid of the future or being afraid of the present. You've, he's like, you got to use your brains. But unfortunately, not everyone has them. They're not standard issue. Brains are not standard issue. It's easier for some... Yahoo to buy masks than it and gloves and sanitizer than it is to buy a brain. And he says some of those Yahoos will drink it. You know, I mean, who, you know, advice of a doctor, listen to the professionals, make choices that are sound. He says you can't, but you can't tell people what to do. You can't tell them because we're going to do what we want to do. I don't care. I'm fine. I'm young. Or I'm old, I don't care what happens to me. Well, it's not about you, is it? It's not about you. A whole country of you are the reason why we're in this mess in the first place. Or perhaps 40% of you. He's like, put that in your pipe and smoke it. I bet many of you states are wishing you had... Oh, please do not say that on this video. He's referring to laws that allow for a certain type of um, recreational inhalant drug to be used recreationally, he, that it should be legal is what he's <laughs> referring to. I bet some of you wish that was the case now. <laughs> bet you wish you could get that at the supermarket. Right next to your toilet paper. That's ridiculous. People aren't people ridiculous. Oh, they don't. They're not worried about their neighbors being able to eat or pay their bills. They're worried about wiping their mm, a holes. He says. I guess Robin is really strong and has a lot. He's like, yeah, I am fiery. He says, yeah, because I just I, in my brain, I'm going, you're fiery. You're fiery. Oh my gosh, you really have an opinion about this. Yes, I do, and so should you. It should be right. If you're angry, yeah, you should be angry. If you just are complacent, if you don't really care, that's the problem. That's what got us here in the first place, is not caring enough about everybody and only caring about yourself. So can you give us some hope? It will get better. He says it will get better. It's going to take you some time. It's going to take you some time going to have to inventory your life. What do you want from your life? Are you really being a good person? Are you really a, a good person? Maybe that's not on your agenda for this lifetime. Maybe you don't want to be a good person. What do you want? What do you really want from life? What do you want from it? To survive? To just survive? Just you and that's it? Nobody else? Screw everybody else? What do you really want? What do you want? It's kind of deep. I know it's kind of deep, but it's, it's true. It's truth. It's where you're at. It's where you're at. 
it's not all gloom and doom is what he's saying. It's like not all gloom and doom, but you gotta be smart and use your brain. But some of you don't have them, so maybe you won't use them. It's kind of what he's saying. <laughs> You can't expect people, oh my gosh, there is this meme on Facebook that I saw that was, um, you can't go to the circus expecting to have an experience different than what it would be like to go to the circus. Like you can't go to the circus, something, I can't even remember it, something about a clown is a, is a clown, you know, kind of a thing. Like, like it's, you can't expect anything different to happen. I, I, horrible. I can't even draw the meme in now because I'm so altered. I'm in a different state. And I, all I see is him dressed up like Patch Adams with the big clown shoes, his doctor coat, and his big squeaky nose thing. Um, it's like not my circuits, not my monkeys. Mm, it's not that. It's everybody's business. Everybody's business is everybody's business, you know. Interesting. There's a lot here. Yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot. He's like, but you'll get through it. He said, you'll get through it. You will. You'll get, you'll get back to better. You'll get healthier. He says, you'll get healthy again. You'll get healthy again. And there's going to be some things that are going to need to be taken care of. There's going to be some things that are going to be on the to-do list that need to be taken care of. And he's talking about social issues, you guys. We all know that, right? We all know that. All right, so I don't want to get all political and get into any kind of debates or anything like that. But thank you, Robin Williams, for your conversation with us from the afterlife, including that current events piece. Thank you so much for that. This is Bridget. You're watching Above Life Channel. I'm a psychic medium and empowerment coach. I also have another channel if you enjoy my vlogs or you want to see some card readings or videos about my psychic life. You can check out Fairy Grasshopper channel on YouTube as well. Be sure to like and subscribe to our channels. All right, so as always, I hope that we've inspired your spirit, given you some hope. The purpose here is always to encourage you. It is always to motivate and inspire you because this is your life after all. It's yours now. It's yours. So live it. Live it fully. Live it boldly. Do your best. Just live it. Thanks for watching, you guys.